Hi, everybody. Hi, Patsy. Hi, Betty. Welcome. <laughs> I'm a little cold. It's in my basement, and I've just been cold all day. I'll probably get warm once I get started, but um, it's cold down here. Um, I wanted to show the Sand Hill Sling, a pattern by um, Noodlehead. I... I closed it out just a second. Um, I forgot to link it in the comments before I, or in the description before I started the video. So sorry about that, but it's um, the Sandhill Sling. Hi guys, yay, hi Annette, hi Karina. Um, and the pattern calls for um, a drop in lining. Not my favorite. I don't love drop-in linings. I just don't. I feel like it's hard to get it just exactly how I like it. But luckily, I have been doing videos on how to bind bags, like how to, you know, do the binding on the inside. And this is the type of bag that works perfect with that. And so I did my first one a couple days ago with the binding. Hi, guys. Yay, lots of people here, that's great. Um, and I loved the end result. It turned out awesome. So if you've been wanting to try some binding, this is a great pattern to try because it's simple. Oh, you got the notice, Tara, I'm so happy. Yay, I'm glad that's working. Um, this bag is very simple. It's a small bag. It doesn't require a lot of material or um, hardware. And I would say it's a beginner bag. You have a gusset that you're working with. And I think this is a great bag to kind of work with that gusset and um, practice on that. And so I am not showing you from beginning to end because the designer um, from Noodlehead wants to do a whole tutorial herself, but she okayed it for me to show you how I altered it to do the binding method on this bag. So I'm going to show you where I start to change the pattern um, to make that doable, okay? So I'll go over all my pieces and show you what I have first, and then we'll go from there. Um, I will try to answer, question, uh, answer questions as I go. Hi, I'm so happy everybody's here. I was trying to do a middle of the day live so other people could join. I tried to switch on and off. Um, there we go, I got all my comments there. Yay, so many people. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I'll try to answer questions as I go, and but I will also try to keep this like going so we can get this done. Okay, so I am going to show you my pattern pieces that I have, and I'm already getting warm, see? All right. <laughs> Hello. Nicola, Raylene, Karina. Oh, it's late in Norway. Sorry, I can never find a time that works for everybody. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Jolyn. Heidi. Okay, so my pieces that I've already got done, I already did, all my main pieces are done. So this is the back of my bag. I did, this is different. I put two connectors at the bottom just because it, um, you can switch which shoulder you go over. And I know this is for my sister's friend and I know that she would probably like to switch and be able to choose which shoulder. It doesn't make that big of a difference, but I just did two hooks there. Um, so I've got my whole connector and everything on. I am not showing the whole bag. I'm just showing the binding method because the designer wants to show the entire bag herself in her own video. So I am just showing you how to do it if you wanted to do it with binding, okay? So I'm showing you all my finished pieces first. This is the front of my bag. This is a simple pattern. It's a beginner pattern. I've just got my zipper pocket put on there, okay? And rounded my corners. My insides, just canvas. There's not a lot of interfacing either. Um, all I used on this is Woven Fuse, that's it. Um, woven fuse on my cotton pieces. I didn't use anything on my vinyl except for the connectors. I used a little piece of Decaville light 
and um, my vinyl, yeah. So really easy on interfacing. So this is just my slip pocket. I didn't do the elastic option. I just did a just a regular slip pocket on my inside piece. So those are my four pieces, front and back, inside and outside. And then I have my zipper panel, my main zipper panel, okay? I just put it together like a normal zip, zipper panel. And I went ahead and sewed it all together. So it's one piece, just like this, okay? I did have to... Because depending on what your seam allowance is here when you sew your zipper panel together, um, I did have to trim each end of my panel down by a fourth inch because you want it to be the same width as your gusset pieces, okay? So now it's the same width as my gusset pieces. So I'm going to start where you would change the pattern if you wanted to do the binding method instead of the drop-in lining, okay? So this is where you would start. So we're going to take this and we're going to make our circle gusset. Okay. All right, I'm just looking at what I missed here on the comments, hopefully nothing. Here we go, guys. And hopefully it's not loud upstairs. My whole family's home because I can't ever do one with nobody home, so I ask them to tread lightly. <laughs> okay, so we are going to make our circle gusset. So this is my exterior piece, exterior of my zipper panel. I'm just going to clip those together. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and just do it all at once and take my... Um, lining and clip it on the other side. Right sides are together on both of them, okay? Just like that. So your zipper panel is in the middle. Okay, and I'm going to sew along here with a half inch seam allowance. And then we'll flip it and top stitch it. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Susie. There we go. Okay. Just a half the pattern is a half inch seam allowance on most things, and I'm gonna do that on this part. Not everything. Okay, and then you just want to flip it just like that, okay? Both pieces out, and I'm just top stitching along here. I'm just making a nice circle with my gusset and my zipper panel right now. Sorry for the foot, the footprints and pounding upstairs. Okay, so once you have one side connected right there, hi Paula. Hi, Caitlin, yay. Um, you're going to take and do the other side and you're gonna make a circle, okay? So I'm taking my exterior and putting it on the other side of my zipper panel here. And then I'll flip up my lining as well. Oh, good, Susie, I'm glad. I was hoping doing it in the afternoon would be able to catch some different people on the live, so I'm glad. Okay, so I'm flipping up the lining right sides together and I'm just doing a big old circle and now both of my ends are in there. So this is what it should look like, okay? Half inch seam allowance. Oh, Kim, you can't hear the upstairs, I'm so glad. Good, hopefully I'm louder than that. they are. <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> They're probably running with the puppy doggy. All right. Hi, Elaine. Okay, so you just wanna top stitch that too. So I'm gonna turn it right side out like this and I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna top stitch that as well. From Ireland, what time is it in Ireland, Elaine? I'm curious. 
I wish I could find one single time that worked for everybody around the world. <laughs> okay. So now we've created our circle for our gusset and I am going to sew this all together so it's one piece. So I kind of just clip it a little bit so it's even here. So when I sew it together, I don't have a little bit of a bump or anything in it. Okay, I'm just clipping them together. 11.25 p.m., that's pretty good, okay. That's not horrible. Like my sister and I say, that's not the worst. All right. Right there. Oh, good, I'm glad, Elaine. It is very addicting making bags. All right, so now I am going to just sew this so it's, you know, the lining and the exterior are together because I want it to be one piece. And if you guys have done any of the Oro Rosa patterns, this is very similar. It's identical to how her bags are put together with her binding. Any bag with these type of pieces, you can put together this way. Hi, Kalisha. Thanks for joining. Kristen, you're on your third Carissa clutch. Wow, of the day, I'm impressed. Mona from Louisiana, how's it going? Okay, so now you wanna just do the same thing on the other side here. My last, um, I made with waterproof canvas on the outside and that waterproof canvas makes a fabulous sling. It turned out so awesome. Okay, Lori, you're not late. I'm just starting. I'm just showing how to do the binding on this. Okay, so I want, so I've got my circle and now I want to make sure my centers, I've already marked my centers up here, but now I want to mark my centers down here on this end because that's important for when we put it all together. Okay, I'm just doing small clips. You can mark them with a marking pen or however you like to mark your centers, okay? Okay, so that's my circle gusset. I'm gonna put that aside real quick. And then, so your panels. You want to put your panels together, okay? I want my slip pocket to be on the back side, right? Yes, so I want the one that doesn't have anything on it to go onto my front panel. So I'm putting them wrong sides together and I am just basting them together, okay? And it may, and we're making one, one piece by doing this. You want it to be one full piece, okay? Does that make sense, hopefully? And I always use my outside as a guide because sometimes, like right here, my lining is a little bit bigger, but I want it to be the outside, okay? Um, Lisa, can I do the Kaylee Crossbody by KM Designs? I'm not sure, I've never done a KM Designs pattern yet. Isn't that Chris McIntosh? I can totally look into that. All right, so I'm just basting my exterior panel and my lining panel together, wrong sides together.
Okay. So I just turned it into one piece here, okay? Front, back, this is the right side of my lining. And I just want to trim any extra because you want it to be flush here. That's important for when you're doing your binding. You don't really want it to be uneven at all. Okay. Just like that, and then go ahead and do the same thing on your other one. <laughs> Less pieces is better, yes, Lori. This does not have a lot of pieces to it, and I love it so much. Hi, Pat. Oh, thank you so much. All right, so this is my back piece and my other lining piece, wrong sides together. I'm gonna clip those together, all right. Get them all lined up here. Sometimes I wish I could actually hear you guys talking. It would be so fun to actually hear your voices. All right. Um, Tara, no, I have not done the blue collar bowler. That is a designer that in the past has told me no because she wants to do her own videos. I know other people have done her videos, but I'm not sure if it was, I don't know. Um, so I haven't asked to do any more of her patterns because of that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and baste my two pieces together here. Okay, and now I have my connector here, which you need to get over. So I just fold a piece of leather to put behind my foot here to help my foot up and it just glides right over. Okay. Susie, you've never done binding before, but you've done it on a quilt. It's very similar on a bag. And I really like it for these patterns where they're supposed to be drop-in linings. And if you are not a fan of drop-in linings, it's a great, great alternative to it. So you should have three total pieces now, okay? That's all you should have left. Oh, I'm glad you bought the pattern already and you need to do it. It's so awesome. It is, it's actually a great Christmas pattern for someone you wanna make a quick bag for. Oh, thanks Angel, that's sweet of you to say. I could ask again, but I don't, I don't think the answer would be yes. All right, I'm just trimming down all of this extra. If I had any connectors that went over like that because I need it to be um, flush with my lining for the binding and everything else looks good. All right, we're gonna start attaching these pieces to the gusset and doing our binding. So I'm gonna start with my front. All right. Oh, what was that? Uh, what be... I missed a question about a foot. You're not using a Teflon foot. Pat, I have a walking foot. When you have a walking foot, you do not need a Teflon foot. It's fabulous. Okay, so I am going to attach my gusset to my front piece. I'm gonna make sure I have my centers. Nope, I don't. Mark your centers on your front and back pieces real quick. Yeah, I love, love, love my walking foot. It is fabulous. 
Okay. So you want to start clipping on this to your front piece, okay? I am doing right sides together, right? So my exterior part of my gusset to my exterior part of my back, okay? I'm gonna start up here. This is just time consuming and boring. I'm just clipping it all the way around and I have to go around the corners. So talk to me while I do this. <laughs> So I, I do my, my top and bottom first, and then I work my way around, and I'm gonna clip the corners of my gussets to help them go around the, um, the curves easier. But it's just a lot of clipping. You can staple if you want, um, if you feel like that's easier. So I'm just doing the tiniest little clips here like eighth of an inch because I'm sewing this on at a fourth inch seam allowance. So I don't want my clips to be huge, okay? Um, Cindy, what would be the reason for a designer? Would not, Um, a lot of the designers don't want their patterns to get interpreted wrong or copied, which I totally understand and I respect the designer's decision for not wanting videos, which is why I always ask. It's their, I feel like it's their right. It's not always something they can control because people do them anyways, but I always like to have the designer's support when I show a pattern because the world works better that way. <laughs> it just, trust me, it does. <laughs> And some designers want their own YouTube channels and to do the videos for them for any profit they might get as well on that, which I understand. So I'm just clipping all of my little curves where my, on my gusset where my, I have to turn it. Um, yes, Susie, very doable on a domestic. This is not a lot of pieces, not a lot of interfacing. You could do it so easily on a domestic. It's a great pattern for that. I think most of noodle head patterns are very, very domestic friendly. I know I started out making the range backpack a year or two ago on my Bernina. And um, yeah, I mean, she writes them so they're very doable. I know. These are huge scissors. I love these scissors. I need to sharpen them though. I, we talked about that in one of these videos. I need to find a sharpening place nearby. All right. I'm just kind of going over my corners here and turning them. It's kind of a sharp little turn and I use a ton of clips. Okay. And then I go down to my other corners here. Um, Pat, Pat, this is the Sand Hill Sling by Noodlehead. Well, I, <laughs> yes, the Antoinella is a bag I still wanna make. It is still on my list. I cut it out forever ago and I just, Ugh, it's just so hard sometimes to make time for everything. But yes, I would love to do that bag still. Hopefully soon. You can see what? I can see a clip popping off. Oh yeah, clips pop off on me all the time. It happens, they break, they pop. See, mine's a little uneven here, so I'm gonna have to rework my little corner, I think. And that's okay. It's fine, it's fine. I just come down here and work that just a little bit more in. Right there. And that'll be good. 
It does not have to be perfect, guys. It really doesn't. Okay. And then I'm gonna go this end. All right. Okay. Yeah. See my my gusset is really tight this time around. It wasn't that tight when I used the waterproof canvas. That's okay. You just kind of work with it. going to be a tight fit right there. Okay. There we go. All right. So I am going to, I swear this is the most time consuming part right here is just clipping on the gusset. Okay. There we go. All right, did I miss? No, Nicole, you didn't miss it. I'm only showing the binding part, so we're not very far into the video. Okay, so I have this all clipped. Um, the way you sew this on, I think it's preference. I like to do it with my gusset side up because I can kind of see what's going on on my corners. When I do it with my gusset down, which is what a lot of designers say to do, I feel like my gusset a lot of the time slips here and I don't catch it. Um, so that is why, <laughs> Angelina, can you make one for me too? I need that on my wall as well. Um, <laughs> so I like to do it gusset side up. So that's what I'm gonna do. I am using brown thread because I want my thread to match my vinyl on the outside. Just so, you know, if when you turn it, and there's a seam showing or something, it, it blends in with whatever fabric you have on the outside. When you do binding, that doesn't really happen that often, but um, just in case. So I'm gonna start sewing this on, and I think I'm actually, hi guys, I'm gonna turn you around over on this side. I feel like it's a better view for when I'm doing this part. You tell me, I think it is. All right, here we go. Let me know how this view is, if you feel like that's great. All right, here we go. So I am just gonna do this at a fourth inch seam allowance. And I have a pretty big stitch length, mine's about a five, okay? And I'm just gonna work my way around the bag. Okay, good. You like this angle, guys? Great. And I like this because I have control kind of of manipulating my gusset piece to make it flat around those curves, which is another reason I like to sew with my gusset side up, okay? Now on this piece, it's gonna be a little short and that's okay. Do you see how my lining is sticking out? I don't know if you can see that. I'm just gonna trim that down and it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine, people. All right, see how those curves work nicely when you clip them. it out a little bit before I get to it and that kind of helps and go nice and slow no need to hurry flat 
flatten that out. Come on. There we go. Okay. Yeah, Pat. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. I don't have permission to do a full video, which is fine. I am just excited that she's letting me show you how to do this part. She wants to do her own video for this bag, I think in January, but really this bag is a beginner bag and I don't feel like you guys would struggle with all of the, like the basic um, construction of the bag. It's a very um, well-written, easy pattern to understand. Okay. So that, my gusset is on, looks good, looks good. Okay, so just gonna show you. So that's what we have, right? So this is like the, the right side of our lining on this side, we've got our raw edges here. So anywhere where you have an uneven edge right here, we're gonna trim that down because we want it to be even with this. So right there on that corner, I've got a little bit on this corner. I've got a lot on that. So it's okay if it looks like that because we're going to trim it down. Yeah, the fourth inch seam is tough. Agreed. You could do a bigger one, but with the binding, I mean, your binding is a half inch total. So you kind of need that fourth inch seam for this part. I'm just trimming it down so it's all together. And right here. All right, so here's where we're gonna add our bias tape, okay? Here we go. So I have just a big old spool of it. I got it. Bias tape, double fold, it's a half inch. I got it off of Amazon, I will link it. It's like 20 bucks for 55 yards of it. Or you can make your own to match whatever lining that you have. It's totally up to you, but this is the way I'm doing it. Um, you could staple it, Janine. Is that, your, is that how you say it, Jen? Ginny Ann, Janine, um, you could totally staple it. So you want to fold down this edge by about a half inch, right? And that's where we're gonna start. I'm just kind of finger pressing it. You can iron it down if you want, totally up to you. Um, you wanna start at the bottom of your bag and this is also another part where it's up to you. You can put it on this way and fold it over to this side, or you can do it this way and fold it over, whichever way you want. I think actually I'm gonna do it this way. Um, so it's on the bottom, right? So there's my bag. I'm starting on the bottom and I'm just gonna clip it just at the beginning. And then I'm just gonna use my fingers and work it around the rest of the bag as I go. I'm not gonna clip it the whole way. I don't feel like you need to, but if you really think you do, then go for it. Clip it around the whole way, but it kind of, because it is bias tape and it's cut on the bias, it curves nice. Um, and I don't feel like you need to. Okay, so I'm gonna sew this on again at a fourth inch. So I'm just pretty much following, you know, the, the same, um, stitches that I just did with this tape now, with this bias. Okay. And it's kind of nice because I don't have to worry about anything not being, you know, sewn because I kind of have it all sewn together. So this just takes some time and you just got to get this all on there nice. Go slow around your curves here. Um, helps sometimes if you have a little tool to hold it down. 
Um, you cannot, I mean, you could start on the top of the bag too. I feel like the bottom, you don't ever see this bottom part of the bag. So I usually do the bottom of my bag for this, but it's preference. It's whatever you want. You could do it at the bottom or the top. Okay, if you have a little tool to hold your tape where you want it, it really does help. Especially around your corners, just like that. Okay, and then keep going. I wish I had pink tape to match, but I'm too lazy and I didn't want to make any, so. <laughs> and truth be told, People do not notice the insides of bags. I do not worry about my insides matching as much as my outside, so there you go. I've made enough bags with binding to know that it, sh it does not show. I am going to unzip my zipper. It helps this top part lay a little bit better and gets that out of the way. Okay, there we go. I need to get my nails done again, they're too long. Wrong end. Betty. I found them in my jewelry box and I'm like, oh, I forgot about those. I love my bracelets. I'm just going nice and slow. Sorry, this is not a fast part at all for me, at least. I take my time on this part. need a place for that to sit. Kristen, no, I agree. Hi, Patty. Thanks for joining. Hi, Anne. We're just putting on this binding here. I'm not going to use it this time right here at the end. All right, so we're back at the end. And you're gonna overlap this current one with where we started just a little bit because you had folded that raw edge down, right? So it's gonna be enclosed. So this raw edge will be enclosed. All right. I'm gonna clip all my threads here. And I want to trim this down. Hi, Donna. Rhode Island. Ooh, lots of snow, huh? We just had quite a bit of snow here. And I'm just trimming that off, my extra. Okay. Paula, do I have something that slows the speed on my machine? Nope, just my foot. <laughs> it's just my foot. <laughs> I've just learned how to control the speed pretty well. Okay, so this is what we have. We are now just gonna fold this over to encase that raw edge of our bag. Super easy, right? Just like that, okay? I folded it all over. So that's what my lining panel will look like. And then I just have to sew it down, okay? So I am gonna clip all this down and then just sew it again. 
seriously, it's a lot like binding a quilt. Same exact idea. Okay, I'm just gonna start here at the bottom. And the bottom part of my um, binding is never pretty. I'm okay with that. Because again, I don't feel like anybody can see it. All right. Trying to get a good view. This is hard to show. All right, there we go. And I am just gonna be folding it around and clipping it on. And I kind of pull it down just like that. What's awesome is you do this side and then you do your other side and then guess what? You're done. That's the whole bag. That's it. This bag, seriously, I can sew one. I can cut and sew one up probably in a matter of three hours if I sat down from beginning to end and did it, which is pretty fast for a bag. There really isn't a lot of craziness to it. We got snow this last week and we had a car rental because I got in a bad car accident two days before we left for our Thanksgiving trip and totaled our Suburban and our car rental was horrible in the snow, horrible. And luckily we just got a new car. That's much better. <laughs> Not a fun experience though. All right, so I'm just clipping. Clip, clip, clip. Yeah, everybody was okay in the accident. It was just me and my daughter, Annabelle, my older daughter, and we were just going to get hot chocolate and we got T-boned at an intersection. And I think it traumatized both of us, but we didn't have any physical injuries, which was so awesome. And I was very grateful for that. But our car is no longer with us. <laughs> so that kind of stinks. All right. Hi, Suzanne. Thanks for making it. I'm just showing the binding. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, very grateful. Okay, so I have just clipped my binding over on the other side. So you can do this one of two ways as well. If you are positive, that you are going to catch this other side in, you can sew on the side that is connected. Hopefully that makes sense. Or if you're worried and wanna make sure that you catch it all, you can sew on the side that you just folded over. I am gonna sew on the side that I just folded over because I wanna make sure that I get this all tacked down the first time around. Um, but that is just up to you as well. Okay, so now we're just going to sew that down. All right. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, hi, Alice. All right, so I'm doing this one too at a little bit smaller seam allowance because this is my final, my final round here. Um, I'm just going, actually, no, you know what? I'm gonna start down at the bottom where I have the overlap here. And I, you can do this one of two ways. You can do it at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, which if you do it at a 3 8 inch, just know that you will see the thread on the other side. You can do it at a fourth inch and um, it'll most likely blend in with the other seam on the other side. It's seriously, this part it is all up to you. I'm doing the fourth inch. Okay, so this is my final sew around this binding. And I need my little tool. 
Um, Alice, I have never used, oops, sorry. I have never used waterproof canvas as a bias. I don't even know if that would work because I don't know if it has a, I mean, can you cut waterproof canvas on a bias to make tape out of it? I'm not sure if it has that. Um, what do I want to say? That stretch to it. I've never tried it because that's the whole idea of the bias tape is you cut it on the bias. It has that stretch to go around your curves. So I'm not sure. Oh, I ran out of bobbin. I'm like, why does that look weird? Just a second, hold please. What kind of foot are you sewing with? Yes, I'm sewing with a walking foot. That's what my machine came with. It's a walking foot machine. But like I've said to other people, you can totally do this on an industrial easily. I mean, a <laughs> domestic, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm not saying the right words right now. You can sew this on a domestic easily. Not a lot of layers. All right. All right, let's try this again. Right here. You used it on a straight, oh good, I'm glad. I'll have to try that then, Alice. That's good to know. I've, I've just, frankly, I've just never tried it. So that's good to know. Your industrial Jack doesn't have a walking foot. I wonder if that's something you could get. I don't, I'm not familiar enough with all the different industrial things out there. But that is something I looked for when I bought my machine. I knew I wanted a walking foot. So that is the first half of my bag. Look at that. It looks great. I think I pretty much kept it on the black. It looks really good. Um, there's not many crazy weird stitches anywhere. And when your bag is all done, you won't be able to see any of your mistakes. Okay, so that is the first part, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and repeat the same exact thing on the next side, and then you'll be done. That's all there is to it. Like, I love how quick and easy, well, not quick, but it just comes together nicely. So I wanna get my other piece. I'm gonna put my strap part in here, right? I want to see the inside of my bag out here. Make sure my D-rings are in. So start clipping everything together. Start with your centers. And we're just going to repeat everything that we just did. All right. 
And you do, I think if your machine was gonna struggle, the only part it would struggle with is your connectors down here. That would be it. Other than that, I think it's pretty basic. Because this strap connector up here, there's not, I don't feel like there's as much bulk to this. All right. <laughs> happy accidents and happy little trees. Um, okay, so I'm just going to clip my little curves here. All right, like I did before. It's about right. And clip this other side. I feel like this is super important and really, really makes a difference in doing gussets. Hmm. Alice, I am not very neat. <laughs> Half the time I'm a mess. <laughs> Which is why I get so nervous about doing lives because usually you guys will see all my crazy mistakes. <laughs> all right, other side here. All right. Oh, thanks, Leisha. That's really nice of you. All right, just go around these curves. I feel like if anything, this, um, whenever you do the, the second side of your bag, it's a little bit more difficult and harder to maneuver with. So this will be just a little bit harder on getting everything put together and sewn, but not horrible. Just because you have more bag that you have to handle now. And again, I've got just like a little bit, my gusset is super tight this time around for some reason. That's okay. We made it work last time, we'll make it work this time. Just readjust those curves on your corner here. It's usually where you can make up that difference. Okay. What scissors are, um, Alice, are you talking about these ones? These are um, Tula pink ones. Do you see that, Tula pink? I do love them. They just need sharpened. All of my scissors, I have killed all of my scissors, guys. Killed them all. <laughs> all right, work on the other side here. Hi, Taylor from Texas. Ether, oh, thanks so much. That's sweet of you to say. You guys are so awesome. All right. Brandy, what interfacing did I use on this bag? It's very light with interfacing. I used um, just woven fuse on my cotton, well, this is actually a canvas. So it's a cotton canvas. I just used one layer of woven fuse too, and that's it. I used a strip of Decavel light in my connectors, and that's, the rest is vinyl and waterproof canvas, and I did not interface anything else. Super, super simple in terms of what you need. 
You could make it, I mean, more interfaced, but I don't think it needs it for the style of bag that it is because it's, I don't think it's meant to be majorly structured. So, yeah. And I think this would make it harder to do if it had a ton of structure to it too. So, I don't know. I would definitely, if you do heavier interfacing, I would definitely keep it out of your seam allowances. So, that would be my two cents on that. All right. My gusset is super tight on this, so we will see how that turns out. I think it's just the same as the other one, though. All right. Well, let's give this a go. All right. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Um, Ether, this is a perfect, um, like, unisex bag. I made it for my nephew, Kevin. The first black one I made is for my nephew, Kevin, for Christmas, and he already, like texted me and before he knew it was for him for Christmas and he said I want that bag you're selling me that bag and I said well Merry Christmas because it's for you <laughs> so I think I did good with that one so yes it is an awesome unisex bag all right so let's just sew these two pieces together again I like to do it gusset side up so I can see my curves and see how this part's going to be a little harder just because I have more bulk to work with here. Um, so it just takes a little bit more muscle. But again, go slow. Nancy, thank you. That's sweet of you. Um, yeah, the circle bag, the Magdalena, you use the Decaville. Yeah, I'm not sure if, if I made it again, I may just, I would maybe make it just like the same materials that I used with this one. So it is easier to get in and out of. Agreed on that one. I think I'm going to have some wrinkles in my vinyl. That's okay. Hi, Pascal. Celine, you're always late. That's okay. Better late than never. all this okay hopefully I would definitely suggest unzipping your bag so you can kind of get it out of your way when you do all the gusset side stuff, all the gussets. All right. Oh, my thread broke. It gets tangled up here. It gets too tight for some reason. Kim. I was super happy she let me do this too. I was excited. Let me rethread this real fast. Ugh. I love it when that happens. Twist it around. There we go. All right. So I am going to take this again, 
Pamela, you're not getting notifications. That's something that is controlled on your end. You have to click to receive notifications. And if you do click to receive them and you're still not getting them, I am not, I'm not quite sure. Um, I've had other people say they don't get notifications in time. I am so sorry. I try to post on my Facebook group and my Instagram every time before I go live at least an hour or a day before so you can kind of know when that's happening. That's another way to stay up to date. Okay. <laughs> My husband's hungry, huh? He ate a gargantuan Jimmy John sandwich for lunch, so, and fries. I don't think he should be hungry. <laughs> He runs 20 million miles a day though, so. That part, there's nothing fancy about that. I just wrap it around and that's how I gauge what I need. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to fold this down a half inch. You can iron it. He is always hungry. My husband is always eating. He eats more than my teenage boys, which is saying a lot. Um, Silver Gypsy. Hi from Arizona. How's it going? All right, so I am going to, oh, not on that side. <laughs> I'm going to start down here. Did I do it this way and I folded it over? Nope, I'm going to start down here because I want to fold it over that side. Okay, I'm going to start down here. And I'm just going to clip it. I just clip the first couple inches or so to get me started. All right. Yes, Dan Myers is my husband. <laughs> He's not some weird person. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. Let's get this binding on. Go nice and slow around your corners. I'm not using the stiletto because I feel like I kind of need <laughs> to maneuver the bag a little bit more on this part because it's more to get around. There we go. I don't, this isn't hard to do on a domestic. There's not a lot of layers. And my machine is flat just like a domestic. So I don't think this would be hard to do on a domestic. Sorry, I'm going slow around my curves here. We don't want me to sew my finger. That might get good ratings though, huh? <laughs> Not worth it. Not worth it.
I'm really kind of smushing this bag under there, and it helps. There we go. Almost there. Uh, finger guard, I wish, for my machine. <laughs> uh, I've had some close calls with it before, but luckily nothing yet. I feel like my nails are long enough that the machine would get my nail before it got my actual finger, hopefully. <laughs> so my nails are my guard. <laughs> yep, I'm going slow, guys. I'm watching my fingers. Use a stiletto tool if you're worried about your fingers. I'm going slow, I promise. Ah, see? But I caught my binding. I've done that before. I caught the other half of my binding in there. See? You're seeing my mistake. There you go. And now it's around my foot. There we go. Try that again. That is the one thing that happens sometimes when I'm doing this. I think cork would be great on this pattern. I'm losing my bobbin here. Where'd it go? Thank you. <laughs> Guess what? I just dropped my bobbin in the oil. Awesome. All right, I gotta wind a new bottom. I just dropped it in my oil pan. <laughs> You're more scared of the needle breaking? All right, sorry. I have to wind um, a bobbin real quick. The joys of being live. All right, ask me a question. <laughs> Give me a second. All right. Hi, guys. Let me just, sorry, I wish I had a separate bobbin winder and I thought I had enough bobbin, but I dropped it in the oil pan, so now I don't. <laughs> All right. Um, Alice, I know. <laughs> Sometimes this is how my videos go when I do videos. It's just one thing after another, but I can edit those out, but lives you can't. So that's okay. <laughs> All right. There's my bobbin. And now my fingers are all oily. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. <laughs> Kind of have to learn not to let it bother you. There we go. New bobbin. Let's do it. Don't drop it in the oil pan. Right? <laughs> oh my goodness. What is my deal? There we go. All right. Gotta reconnect my thread up here. There we go. The puppy is fabulous. Hey, Daniel, have one of uh, the kids bring down the puppy in a minute. Now we can say hi. Marley May can come say hi. She is adorable and she's doing really good. She actually went to the door today 
and wanted to go outside and she went outside and she went potty all on her own. So we're all excited about that. But she is awesome. We are totally in love. Okay, bobbin fixed, I think, but now it's not wanting to roll. Oh my gosh. I hear, I hear someone coming with the dog. <laughs> yep, you can bring her in. Okay, everybody wanna see the doggy? Please pause, I, my bobbin's fixed. Here's Miss Charlotte. She wants you. She wants you. She oh, okay. wants you. She wants you. Okay. Here's Miss Marley May. <laughs> hi. Say hi to everybody. Say hello. Isn't she sweet? <laughs> yep. We love her. Look how little she is. She's just this little wiener dog. What a doll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye, baby. Okay, thank you, sweetheart. Yep. Okay, sorry, let's get back to sewing. <laughs> she does know who mama is. It is really funny. The kids get kind of upset because she wants to always come to me. And I say, if they took care of her like I took care of her, she would want to go to them. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's continue, guys. Sorry for that little... Um, uh, distraction. Here we go. <laughs> Let's get this bag finished. She is so fun. Where does she sleep? She sleeps in a kennel by my bed. I am kennel training her because I don't want to have to deal with that. So she sleeps in a kennel by my bed and she does fabulous she sleeps throughout the whole night. Been doing that since we've had her for like, I think I only had like three or four nights where she was up in the middle of the night. Oh my gosh, I keep catching that. But other than that, she's been sleeping. You see how I keep catching that? Erg. Come on, there we go. I'm gonna have to use my tool. This doesn't normally happen, guys. It's just because I'm on a live. Oh, thanks. I'll tell her you said happy birthday. She just turned eight two days ago. And loved every minute of her birthday. Oh my gosh, guys. I'm so sorry. We'll eventually get this right. Now I feel all stressed out. <laughs> this is not supposed to be happening. All right. Yeah, it might be. No, I think this time it's catching my, I'm catching my binding around that corner, which I'm going to use my stiletto and see if I can hold it down. That's my problem right now, is it's catching my binding on the other side. My goodness, here we go again. Sometimes you just don't have enough hands. You need more fingers. There we go. Yeah. I just needed to get over it and use the tool. That's what I needed to do. There we go. Sorry. 12 hours later, done. <laughs> Okay. Um, how does the separate bobbin winder do? It's actually attached to my machine and I can, if I have um, two spools of the same color, 
I can be winding one um, while I'm sewing, but I only have one of this brown, so yeah. Usually I'm winding as I'm sewing, but I can't do that with this brown because I only have one spool. Does that make sense? So it's actually attached to my machine. Um, my stiletto I got off of, it's this little shop who makes them and I got it off of Etsy. And I think I actually saw it, it's a Oakler Roots, um, showed it on her channel and she had it linked on her channel. And I don't remember, it's really pretty. I already lost the cap, of course, to both ends, but one side's a seam ripper and one side's a stiletto. I'll try and find the link of the store, but I do love it so much. Okay, so we are going to just clip this over on the other side and sew it up. Oh no, you guys can't sleep. Well, I'm glad I can keep you company. Even if I keep screwing everything up. My goodness. I'm just clipping it over like we did on the other side. And then hopefully I can sew this down without any issues and we'll be done. Oh, I just heard a clip pop off. See, happens all the time. Oh, you bought a, just a plain seam ripper from them too? Yeah, so mine's a double-ended stiletto and a seam ripper, and I love it so much. Although I wish I had some kind of like holder for it because I set it down and it's so big and round, it just rolls. It just rolls away every time. So they need to like have it come with some kind of holder. <laughs> that would be awesome. Just a minute, I have a threads poking out here. I don't want that. Oh, good, Lisa. I'm glad. I hope it comes in a decent amount of time. The post office is a mess right now and they're overloaded and orders are not getting there when they should. I usually ship out all of my orders within a day of receiving them. And so it's not on my end. It's definitely on the other end, which totally stinks because there's nothing I can do about that. But I do try and get you your stuff as fast as I can. I do have a lot of more things on my website now if you guys wanna go check it out. Saya Swag, oh, and I do have a sale going on right now. If you put in the code CHRISTMAS, all in caps, 20% off of anything in my store right now. Minimum purchase of 20 bucks. CHRISTMAS, all in caps in the coupon code section, 20% off. There's a few spools of rainbow thread left. And yeah, some hardware. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and sew this on and then we're done. That's it. Okay, fingers crossed. Let's do this. <laughs> I always put my clips on the wrong way. Does anybody else do that? I know there's like a wrong way and a right way, and I always put mine on the wrong way. Uh, 
Um, Wanda, I could use a stapler for the curves. You can totally do that. I just, for my lives, that's so time consuming. And, um, cause you have to sit there and pull them out too. And I can do it this way just fine. But, um, yes, stapler would totally work on the curves. Go for it. For when you're sewing it to the gusset, not for the binding part, but yes. A stapler would be fabulous. No, nothing comes quickly in the mail right now, that's for sure. Quill and Hive, thank you, Annette. Yes, this, this place I got my stiletto is called Quill and Hive on Etsy. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna have to look that up. Now I know what I'm looking for. And there's a bunch of different colors and stuff you can choose from. They're super cute. I love mine. Tiny magnet glued in the middle of this. That might work, but then it would kind of get in your way when you're using it. I don't know. That might work. I may need to just set a little something. I don't know. Or just grab it when it starts rolling away. Almost done, guys. So close. So close. Here we go. We get to see what this looks like. <laughs> Let's hope I didn't screw it up too bad. Here we go. All of my binding is done. I'm trying to get you in a, oh, my room's a mess right now. Eesh. All the lights, sorry. I know that's not the best. Um, okay, here we go. Um, nine weeks to come to Norway. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. All right. So sorry. I was reading your com comments. So this is our binding all done. Okay. Look at that. Doesn't that look awesome? You can't even tell like any wonky stitching or anything. It's great. All right. So let's see if it looks good on the outside. <laughs> All right. My least favorite part. Give me a minute. Cool. Here we go. Yeah, I need to just put a coffee mug close to it. I have my pegboard. I can put it up on my pegboard. All right. Ooh. I think it's gonna be fabulous. Good so far. I'm always worried I'm gonna have some crazy weird thing showing and every time it doesn't happen because this binding method is kind of awesome in that way. Okay. 
here is our bag. I love it so much. <laughs> All right. Look at that. That turned out great. And see, when you see inside, I mean, you can't see the little details of your binding. And it makes such, once I like work with it and push out all my corners, it makes such a good, um, it makes such good seams. All right, and then you clip it. I did a big old strap. I did a one and a half inch strap. And that is our Sand Hill Sling. Oh my goodness. Let's see, which side does it go over? Put it over this way you guys can see it and that's it look at that isn't that cute that's it so that's how you do the binding on the sandhill sling sorry for the issues <laughs> those those issues were all my fault those are my thread and my machine and that um but i hope that helps you guys visualize how this can be done without a drop-in lining. I think I prefer non-drop-in linings. I can never get them to look the way I want them to. And this way, I just know it's all together the way I want it to be. But I really like how it turned out. All right, yeah, I will link the pattern. Again, it's the Sandhill Sling by Noodle Head Patterns. Um, I'll link the pattern in the description below when I'm done. And I really appreciate you all watching and joining and supporting. Um, ask me any questions in the comments afterwards if you have any questions. And I hope to have a tutorial up soon on the Apollo game bag by So Much, is it So Much Magic? I think, I think that's what it's called. All right, you guys all have a good day, rest of the day, night, morning, wherever you are. And I will see you guys soon. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Yay. Okay. Bye.